Hello and welcome to your favorite maritime program, the Master This Week, the voice of maritime. The Master This Week is brought to you by the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, the nation's sole authority and regulator of our oceans and everything that has to do with shipping and the marine environment. As usual, my name is Uba Ngesien and we are coming to you straight from the venue of the launch, the official launch of the Deep Blue Project by no less a person than the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in company of the Who is Who in the Nigerian Maritime and Security Architecture. My name is Ubang Esien and I will be your host on this voyage. You are watching the massa this week. You are watching the massa this week. I'm watching the massa this week. You are watching the massa this week. The boys of maritime. Boys of maritime. Boys of maritime. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Welcome back. It's still the massa this week. The voice of maritime. It's a special edition to commemorate the official launch of the Nimasa Deep Blue Project. And I can tell you on this special episode, you get to find out all that happened when Mr. President came into town to officially launch and flag off the Nimasa Deep Blue Project. Also on this episode is my interview with the man at the center of it all, the Director General and Chief Executive of Nimasa, Dr. Bashir Jamu. My interview with him and I can tell you, the DG on this very day was a very happy man. So if you're ready, as we always say, it's anchors away. Introducing the Nemasa Distress Response Call Lines for all maritime stakeholders, ship owners, seafarers, ship captains, whatever your challenge or distress in the Nigerian maritime domain, please call 0803 0685 167 0708 0005 956 0700 0700 010. If you can't reach us on these lines, please call 0700 0700 020 0700 0700 030. Also, via VHF Radio Channel 16, call and the master will respond. The President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, has emphasized that the flag of the Deep Blue Project is a demonstration of the government's strong commitments to tackling security challenges in the form of piracy and other maritime crimes in Nigeria and the Gulf of Guinea. Speaking at the official flag off of the Deep Blue Project at Apapa Port in Lagos, the President, accompanied by service chiefs, governors and other government functionaries noted that the concerted efforts and innovative actions are required to address maritime security challenges. Waters accounting for over 80% of transportation requirement of the global economy, concerted efforts and innovative actions are required to address attendant security challenges. Therefore, the flag off of the Deep Blue Project marks an important milestone in this regard and in our collective efforts to tackle security challenges in the form of piracy and maritime crimes in Nigeria and the Gulf of Guinea. The President assured that the Deep Blue Project will no doubt facilitate a conducive environment for the maritime sector to thrive and contribute to the diversification of the Nigerian economy while commending all who have worked to bring the initiative to fruition. This intervention, no doubt, will facilitate a conducive environment for the maritime sector to, thri to thrive and contribute to the diversification of the Nigerian economy. 
The Deep Blue Project is a critical step towards the realization of maritime security in the region, which underscores Nigeria's commitment in providing the necessary framework and resources in cooperation with other nations and maritime users. The Minister of Transportation, Right Honorable Roti Miyamichi, in his address, said he came up with the idea of the Deep Blue Project to address the challenges of maritime insecurity as someone from the South South. Honorable Amechi noted that the effective operation of these assets will reduce the cost of shipping goods in and out of the country. With the launch and full deployment of the Deep Blue Project assets and the passage of the suppression of piracy and other maritime offenses Act 2019 by the National Assembly, security of maritime trade in our territorial waters and the Gulf of Guinea are largely guaranteed. The unnecessary security costs borne by shipping companies running into millions of dollars annually has been finally removed. We shall now focus on the expansion of indigenous participation in the maritime trade. The Minister of Defense said that the Deep Blue Project would have been a mirage without the cooperation of the armed forces in the provision of its personnel to man and operate the assets. With the commissioning of this laudable project, the dream of repositioning the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NIMASA, into a high professional and more effective marine, maritime body is gradually coming to a reality. This dream, of course, will have become a mirage without, without the kind cooperation of the armed forces of Nigeria for providing its personnel to man various aspects of the project, including the air asset, the, marita the maritime, and the land assets. In his goodwill message to the launch, the Secretary General of the International Maritime Organization, Kitak Lim, was appreciative of Mimasa and indeed Nigeria's determination to lead the fight against piracy in the Gulf of Guinea and promised the IMO's support for its success. I wholeheartedly welcome today's launch of Nigeria's Deep Blue Project, reflecting Nigeria's commitment to lead the fight against the piracy, not only in your national waters, but in the Gulf of Guinea. The launch of this project is a significant step to enhance maritime security in the region. Earlier, the Director General of the Massa, Dr. Bashiri Jamo, in his address, said that the Deep Blue Project is not all about the assets, but also about the legislation to prosecute offenders. This asset and platform by themselves cannot address the challenges of maritime insecurity. Even if we have assets and arrest the forest, if we don't prosecute offenders, it is wasteful exercise. Mr. President, sir, today the maritime industry expresses its gratitude for you signing the suppression of piracy and other maritime offenses, SPOMO Act 2019 into law, the first of its kind in the entire Gulf of Guinea that is past becoming a model for the other African maritime nations. Under this law, we have successfully prosecuted, convicted, and sentenced about 10 offenders for the first time. Dr. Jamo further stated that the agency is engaging robustly with stakeholders both locally and internationally, and thereby assuming leadership roles in the fight against piracy in the Gulf of Guinea. Realizing the enormity of economic laws on our shipping activity, we also created a window of opportunity for the industry to engage regularly with the agency. This gave birth to NIMASA Joint Industry Working Group, the monthly forum of candid interaction with critical stockholders such as BIMCO, Intercargo, Intertanko, OICMF, among others, provided a sounding platform for shipping and international cooperation that have impacted on maritime security strategies and protection of our CPRs. It is worth noting that major milestone resulting from the partnership with the industry is new framework for the gently tackling maritime piracy in Gulf of Guinea, signed and co-chaired by Inter-Regional Coordination Center in Yaoundé, Cameroon, and the Nigerian Navy, as well as NIMASA, known as Gulf of Guinea Shade. 
Stakeholders at the event bear their minds on the expected impact of the assets. There has been several challenges. Uh, this project started a few years back um, and it, it, we had several challenges, challenges um, that led to several investigations of the uh, organization of this agency. And I'm happy that today all that is put behind us and um, we are here to launch and to show the world Nigeria's capability at protecting our waterways. So I'm happy. I'm happy again because this is one of the first assignments the Honorable Minister uh, gave us um, when we were inaugurated. Uh, he, ch he charged us to ensure the completion of uh, the Deep Blue project. And I'm happy that today, one year after our inauguration, we are here to commission um, uh, these assets. They are also going to be able to immediately react and intervene when there are incidences of piracy. So that means the better the security in our territorial waters, the more vessels we are likely to receive and the cheaper it is also for these vessels to come into the country. So it's a very welcome development. For us, the more vessels that come into Nigeria, the more revenue Nigerian Post Authority we get and that means the nation also in particular. I'm really so excited that this project is being launched today by Mr. President and um, I congratulate uh, Nimasa and uh, the Honorable Minister of Transportation who have who initiated this uh, project. It is long overdue, but at least here we are, it's happening. And I tell you the whole right hand industry is really very excited about this. Hello and welcome back. It's still Nimasa this week, the voice of maritime. And yes, it's still all about Deep Blue, the Nimasa Deep Blue project, designed to manage, control, and protect the Nigerian waterways. And of course, extend its impacts across the entire Gulf of Guinea. And who else to tell us about what happened during the launch of this event formally than the man at the center of it all, the Director General and Chief Executive of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NIMASA, Dr. Bashir Jam. DG, I know you're a happy man today. But okay. I know you're a happy man today. Yes, you're a happy man. Why? Why are you? I, I, you know, I saw you I throughout the day. I saw you throughout the day. I just deserve smiling. to be happy. Smiling. I deserve to be happy. The number one man in the country is here. <laughs> the number one man in the maritime business was here. The IMO Secretary General was here to lend his support. So you just received project. a double portion. A double portion. I think it speaks to your commitment to this project and how far you've taken it to have drawn such level of attention and support. Yes, indeed. Uh, we can do more than that. The life and properties, the life of CPRs uh, is at stake. The international community, you hear the Secretary General say the world are watching. We need to change the narratives. So in doing so, we must work up and do the right thing. So I will start by thanking Mr. President for honoring our invitation. He has done everything for us, for him to be here physically present. That sends the signals that Nigeria, they are not joking in terms of the international perspectives when it comes to the maritime insecurity in Nigeria by extension in Gulf of Guinea. So we really thank and appreciate Mr. President. We thank the Secretary General of the International Maritime Organization we thank the entire governing board of NEMASA 
and specifically the entire governors of the southwest, the Minister of Works, the Minister of Transportation, the Minister of Defense, the Minister of State Transportation, the Minister of State Works, uh, the Minister of State uh, uh, Health, and the Minister of State Sports, all they are here. You have seen the dignitaries, more than seven governors, the Speaker, the House of Representatives, they are all here to tell you how serious this project is. So I, 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 I deserve to be happy and I really appreciate and the Nigerians also appreciate the management and the governing board and the entire staff of Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency remain appreciative for their own time. They, 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 they devoted to come and be with us, to support us, to ensure that yes, they send the signals to the international community that we are not sleeping and we are all together. And apart from this, do you observe the blending of the armed forces? The entire chief, uh, uh, service chiefs, they are here. The Minister of Defense was here. So who left, who else? The Nigerians are here. The entire Nigerians are here. The House of Representatives, they are here. The Senators are here. So no, no any segment of government you, you mentioned, you will not find here. Now that this project has been launched officially, what next? What should we be expecting? I think that's the, a very uh, credible question to ask. What should we be expecting? Well, you know, uh, in my last interview to, with you, I made mention that by June, we will start to see the impact of these assets. And uh, you can go back to... And we're going to play that clip so that people get to know. You conduct, that, yes, you conduct yes. your research. <laughs> what we are going to do in the year 2000, uh, 2021 is the implementation and deployment of this asset. And hopefully, before the mid-2021, we will start reaping the benefits. From middle of February to date, the issue of maritime insecurity in Nigeria and Gulf of Guinea continue to decline. I am happy that my words are coming to reality. So the next stage is for us to ensure the member countries, you know, click into, they buy into this our dream. And uh, that will come under the shade Gulf of Guinea. We expect before the end of the month, we do the first conference to bring all the 32 countries together and draw a kind of action plan to ensure that we succeed and we achieve with deliverables, key performance indicators, and as well as timelines of achieving whatever we want to achieve. The issue now at stake is the issue of sustainability and we'll make sure that sustainability. We thank Mr. President once again with the SPOMO Act. The SPOMO Act Section 9 define how we can, uh, you know, get resources to make sure that we maintain the issue of uh, this insecurity, to maintain the platform, and to be able to make sure that we sustain the uh, uh, tempo of this declining uh, uh, criminality in our own waters. Introducing the Nemasa Distress Response Call Lines for all maritime stakeholders, ship owners, seafarers, ship captains, whatever your challenge or distress in the Nigerian maritime domain, please call 0800-068-5167-0708-0005-956-0700-0700-010. If you can't reach us on these lines, please call. 0700-0700-020 0700-0700-030 Also via VHF Radio Channel 16 Call and the master will respond Now, you've talked about your next line of action now that Deep Blue uh, is firmly on ground which, is, which has to do with 
matters uh, as you've captured in your triple S. Maritime security, which you essentially spent the first one year of your tenure pursuing, and you have locked it down, it appears. We are only now waiting to see the dividends of it. Then you have shipping development, and of course, um, uh, maritime uh, uh, safety. How do you expect that these other two legs will come into force? Specifically, what are you going to be doing? In the last one year, we concentrated much on the maritime security. But that does not mean that we left the other areas unattended. We just tried to create priority area. And the priority area has to do with the maritime security. When you are talking about maritime security, you must talk about the infrastructure. Now, the result we are seeing now is the infrastructures that we have. Uh, so we have achieved almost 70% when it comes to maritime security now. Now, remember on the issue of safety, first of all, we have to look at the navigational areas in the country. Ever since the creation of these agencies, we have never taken a holistic approach that has to do with the wreck removal, which is causing a lot of havoc in our own navigational area. So what we, are, what we did uh, about two months ago, we have prepared memo through the Ministry of Federal Ministry of Transportation and we sent it to the Federal Executive Council. And I would like to appreciate the Federal Executive Council, they have already approved it. So we are now going to the sea, we will start removing the wreck. In removing the wreck, we have contacted Nigeria Railway Corporations to take the boundary. Now the investment in shipping is coming in. The Bielsa State Government, they are coming to join forces with us to establish boundary, and which is going to be very, a, a very good uh, omen for us. So on the issue of safety, we are there. The part of these uh, assets that we have and the platforms and the infrastructures, we have specifically one helicopter that is going to take care of such a rescue. The GMDSS, uh, we have already contacted an American firm, they are already in Nigeria, to make sure that they conclude the co contract of the global maritime distress system. So already the issue of safety is all, also is at the highest peak level. We achieve over 50 percent there. Now the next is has to do with shipping development. Our modular floating dock, we are now in ICRC to make sure that we follow due process in providing the PPP and make sure that these things work as it's supposed to work. So uh, within the next one or two months, we'll be able to uh, you know, deploy our modular floating dock. Uh, we will see the emergence of uh, services provide, uh, service providers uh, in terms of uh, uh, repairs and maintenance of their own vessel. Instead of them going to South Africa, Gabon or nearby country, we'll be able to do it here. We'll be able to save our pairing exchange. We'll be able to employ our younger generation, our students that are in various institutions, Maritime Academy or Maritime University, they will now go there and learn. You understand? Uh, they learn in the areas of electrical engineering, marine architecture, mechanical engineering, and other things like that. So in shipping development, we are there. Now we have fleet expansion. On the issue of fleet expansion, we have advertised the issue of uh, CBFF. Uh, the banks, they have shown interest. What, we are, what we, wait, we are waiting now is to get the approval of the Federal Ministry of Transportation for primary lending institutions. As soon as we get the primary lending institutions, we'll go back to the drawing board, draw the guideline for the drawal, uh, withdrawals, uh, as well as talk to the stakeholders to give us their own areas of technical uh, areas that they want in terms of technical specification of the business. So the fleet expansion is on its own way. So the issue of uh, ship repairs, we are there. The issue of uh, fleet expansion is there. We have achieved. We are sending over close to 750 students on human capacity building. So all this one is uh, on terms of ship, in terms of shipping development. So we are now taking stock of those shipbuilding industry also to make sure that we give them the necessary support for them to strive and do the, the, the needful things they need to do for the uh, shipping to develop. So those are the areas that we are going. And uh, as I said, we are not sleeping. And other areas we are not left behind. Uh, we are also pursuing it Paris Passu. What we just try to do is to see that we put our own priority. Now that the priority of the issue of Deep Blue Project is getting lesser, now we will now increase priority in other areas, particularly 
particularly on the issue of fleet expansion, the disbursement of CBFF. Now, we also have the issue of, uh, you know, uh, physical and monetary incentives. Our physical incentive is already in the presidency, seeking for Mr. President's approval on the issue of uh, physical incentives. The monetary incentives we are now taking with the central bank governor. So the stakeholders, they will have cause to smile before the end of the year. You will see the milestone we are going to have. Congratulations are very much in order. Thank you very uh, much. Uh, for, the, for the milestone achievement and to say that the industry is waiting with great expectation to see these other areas unfold. Thank you for watching this special episode of Nimasa This Week, The Voice of Maritime. We hope you continue this conversation with us. And you can see clearly that Nimasa is committed to living up to its responsibility of ensuring that our waterways are safe and secure for our seafarers and for shipping to thrive so that our economy can grow. So you can continue this conversation with us by getting in touch on all of our various communication channels as displayed on your screen. Of course, you're always free to get in touch with the agency through the information available on our website. Keep in mind that this is not the end of the Deep Blue project. If anything at all, it is the beginning of the Deep Blue project and its intended impact by way of safer seas and calmer coast. Till I see you next time, it's Ubang Asian, and I'm asking you to stay on course. Bye-bye.